everybody, welcome back. How do you get a streak going in Isaac? Oh, <laughs> one run at a time. Yo, 40, BDSD. We got wooden nickel. We got <laughs> wheel of fortune. We've got, um, we, we got a, a decent rate of fire. I mean, oh, and we've got uh, euthanasia, which is like, is okay. I mean, the seed, it, it really, the quality of this seed depends exclusively on uh, our HP right now. This could be like a 4 out of 10. Or it could be, I don't, th I don't know if I've ever seen that room before now that I think about it. Um, it could be like a 4 out of 10. It could be like a 6 or a 7. Like if we had 3 HP, I would, I would sign off on this being somewhere between a 6 and a 7. Um, last run, you know, we, we weren't really like that well off on the last run, but we had Satanic Bible, which really, um, you know, can turn any middling run into a, a pretty confident victory. So I'm very thankful for that, especially given, you know, the frequency that that item shows up, which is constant. Um, we did have 0 0.66 speed, which, you know, we're, we're turning that upside down here. Turning that Mario Lemieux into a Wayne Gretzky. Which is really, like, you know, you turn a frown upside down. You're taking a, a bad thing, or at least an expression of negativity, and, and turn it into positivity. Um, you turn into Mario Lemieux into a Wayne Gretzky. It's 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 an upgrade, but it, like you're still talking about you know possibly the two best NHL players of all time. I know there's an argument that perhaps uh, Mario Lemieux is better than Wayne Gretzky, but uh, the argument to me strikes me as uh, merely being academic for its own sake. In my personal opinion, I got honestly, if you're talking about players who I enjoyed watching um i was lucky enough to see uh, most of uh, well not most of but much of mario lemieux's career and you know a decent chunk of wayne gretzky's always found mario lemieux a little bit more uh of an exciting player but i don't think you can deny like wayne gretzky's dominance is just like it's ridiculous sure mario lemieux might have uh more points per game and and a career hamstrung by illness and injury admittedly but you know, I mean, some of the Wayne Gretzky stuff, it just speaks for itself, you know? If you take away all of his goals, he's still the point leader in, in NHL history. It's it's just madness. So, I don't want to take the pill. But this is it's kind of a wonky one, because I'm like, you know what? I think we put this down, and I, I really... A bomb is worth it. it. It's worth the try, even if it doesn't pan out. Okay, it panned out. <laughs> but to get a bomb would still be really nice. Okay, it's that's still very, very good. To, to get Curved Horn is like it, almost better than any damage upgrade you can get. We also got the Chariot, which will then allow us to get a key, open this up. We got some money. I was really, I mean, if we got a bomb out of that, we get an HP upgrade, but. So I, right now we have paid four cents for Curved Horn, which is an insanely great deal. We're going to invest the other four cents. If it was five, we might reconsider, but four doesn't do anything for us, really. All right. It is what it is. We could take the pill, but I don't concern myself with the opinions of sheep. Moving on. Seller two, two HP. All right. I mean, the, I would say this run started at like a five, but now like a slightly above average. Ooh, <laughs> that's good stuff, dude. A slightly above average rate of fire combined with not the bare minimum level of HP. Oh my god. We, we're, we're doing good stuff now. We're doing good stuff now. Anyway, I'm, I'm recording this on the same day as the last one. You know, it feels like one of those like strike while the iron is hot sort of situations. Got, got a decent sleep last night. I mean, nine hours is more than a decent sleep, to be clear. But again... It is is nine hours that takes eleven and a half hours to get, which is fine. You know, I, it, uh, oftentimes you know with the newborn, we're in bed for eleven and a half hours. We only get like five hours of sleep. So I think that I, I as Hulk said, I take this as an absolute win. Ha <laughs> ha, Lamay May, A Lamau. Remember that? What I. Whatever happened to Alamau? We're, we're too busy bringing back Rage Comics right now to bring back Alamau, but I'll, I'll table that for like 2023, because I think Alamau is like a 20, 2014, 2015 sort of joint. We'll bring that back ironically later. I, I will say, so I, I've, I've been trying to spearhead this crusade to bring back Rage Comics. 
um, ironically, but it's also entering some kind of like post-ironic, like genuine appreciation that scares me, but I'm willing to see where it goes. I love that, you know, r slash Northern Lion is still... Man, I really want to get that. Let's see what's going on in here. Um, r slash Northern Lion is still like, you know, valid discussions and questions about the content. r slash NLSS Circle Jerk is just exclusively Rage Comics and... I love it. <laughs> I love them both, but I do love going to the Rage Comics subreddit right now. I think we do nothing there. I think we do nothing. Laissez faire. Bartleby the Scrivener. Look it up, sweetheart. Halo of Flies is pretty sweet. I'm, I'm cool with that. But this to me, and I don't want to make you feel bad about this, but this to me feels like the kind of run where, uh, we basically just pick up Brimstone immediately. I'm not even hedging my bets. I'm not saying Brimstone, Mom's Knife. I'm saying this is like... This is gonna be Brimstone. Prepare yourself. Knew we were getting the deal. That's not even close. Yep. Honestly, I think we ignore it. I think we ignore it. Even though that, like, you know, getting the... We were less than 20 wins when we died on our, our last streak. We, maybe we were 20 exactly. Um, even though, you know, we're, we're coming off of one of our worst streak uh, performances of 2020. Um, I think, you know... I cut myself a lot of slack for the fact that... We're, we're dealing with kind of, like, you know, unprecedented physiological <laughs> concerns. Um, and I think that... You know, now we can start to build something better, but just keep, you know, sticking with the habits that worked out well for me over the course of the past 10 months or so. I think that's the, the ticket to success, without a doubt. Anyway, what do we got going on in Anecdote City? Not that much, really. Watching a lot of television, watching a lot of movies when the, when the mood strikes me. But I don't really, like, digest any of them. They're just sort of, like, on simultaneously, and they, they waft over me. Like the, the scent of a delicious pie cooling on a windowsill. Hold on, I received a text message from my mom. My mom, she's an extremely nice lady. Don't get me wrong. I don't know if she's used to the, the modern world we live in. Of, of Amazon packages arriving on the regular. I mean, you know, we, we get the doorbell ringing, you know, more than I would like, to be quite frank, uh, here. But, um, you know, we she's like, can I have some Amazon packages delivered to your house? I, I gotta just wonder, like, what kind of... A, she would respect it if I said this, but, like, what kind of a person would I be if I was like, no... Have them sent to your place. Like, it's, but it's one of those asks that is like, you know, it's just polite to ask rather than assume, I suppose. But, you know, we, we picked up her packages for her and then she sent me a text and was like, did you pick up my packages? I'm going to reply. Don't get me wrong. I do think I want this, actually. Um, but I'm just like, don't worry about it. We got like an open door policy with the, with the Amazon packages. We just let them show up and then, you know, we'll, we sort them out at the end of the day. I'm not gonna open it. I'm, I'm assuming it's some kind of, it's probably like a spirulina or something like that. Isn't it weird that spirulina is good for you, but like Michelinas are not? I'm just workshopping a couple of bits to see like what, what could possibly work for us right now. <laughs> and we're, we're striking out. As of right now, I'd say we're striking out. We got a really good uh, work-life balance going with my, my mom being here, though. It, it's like the greatest trade deal in the history of uh, trade deals. We get delicious uh, soups home-cooked that are delivered to us, uh, I would say, three times a week right now. Like, just... I've already had a, a delicious uh, tomato basil soup. I've already had a delicious Moroccan chickpea stew. And then she just dropped off some homemade corn chowder. And she went the extra mile. And actually, she like cooked some bacon and then broke it up into bacon bits and was like, sprinkle this on before you eat it. 
Now, what do we have to give up in exchange for this uh, incredible treatment? We have to let her look after our granddaughter and soothe her when she cries sometimes. I don't know if my mom realizes that she is losing this deal at both ends. Yeah, there's sentimental value or whatever. I'm just saying, she would never make it in the, in the high-powered negotiations of a Fortune 500 company. Let me get this straight. You're gonna cook me soup? And when my baby cries, you're gonna sing it a, a, a song? You would never make it on Succession. What would, what would Jeremy Strong on Succession say about this? I don't know, it's a weird bit. I don't know where it's going. I also haven't seen enough Succession to really back it up. Okay, okay. Um... I would prefer to take a passive. Let me start by saying, you, you can't really lose on this one. The only question... Okay, so if you're gonna take a passive, then you don't take Eden's Soul. Fair enough. Which one of these do you want out of Trinity Shield, Seraphim, or the body? Um, honestly, it's a tough call. I, I consider these items pretty close to equal. Um, I would honestly say, I think this is going to be a, a spicy take. But without having any kind of defensive items, I, I, I'm going to take the body. I, I don't normally consider it that great of an item, but... I think here it's a, a situation where it makes the, the most sense, quite frankly, just to make sure we got that kind of HP rope to keep us alive. Help me. Um, anyway, I forgot what I was talking about. Basically, my mom's really nice. It's a, it's a good situation. Happy to be a part of it. Oh. And by be a part of it, I mean consume lots of soup. <laughs> I mean, she's legit. One of the things she had delivered to our place was like a, a stand mixer. So that, you know, for that tomato soup, she could actually like blend it up and make it nice and, you know, creamy instead of a little bit chunkier. I don't know, dude. I'll be honest with you. I So I'm culinarily well-traveled. I eat a lot of weird stuff. Some of it I like, some of it I don't, right? Um, but I have weird culinary blind spots as well. Like, the tomato soup my mom made for us last week was legitimately, like, the first tomato soup I can recall having in my entire life. I've been thinking about it, because, like, if somebody told me I've never had tomato soup, I would start to give them the third degree. I would be like, oh, really? Where were you on the night of, you know, you get the idea. I'd be giving him the cross-examination. But I was thinking about it, and I was like, you know what? I mean, it, it kind of lines up. As a child, I basically thought I didn't like any vegetables, um, which includes tomato. And then even as I got older, I started eating vegetables and being like, yo, dude, vegetables rule. Broccoli, so underrated. I was still like, oh, except for tomato. Yikes. Yikes on that, but it is what it is. Um... And even still, tomato is not uh, my favorite vegetable. I know we're, we're talking not biologically speaking, like not the you know Linnaean uh, taxonomy. I I would say generally speaking, I do prefer like tomatoes to mushrooms. I understand mushrooms are not really considered a vegetable, or rather a fungi, but you know you get the idea. They kind of function as a vegetable from a cooking standpoint. Um, they do function also as a meat analog, but that's only in some situations. You know, like, I mean, jackfruit functions as a meat analog. That doesn't make jackfruit, like, not a fruit. You know what I mean? Wait, hold on. There's, there's got to be a bit here. You got to let me do it, though, and I'm probably going to get sued by Paul McCartney. Let's go there. Okay. Jackfruit seasoned in the dead of night. Vegans coming to our trivia night. Darren's wife. She will not consume a product with a life. 
jackfruit. <laughs> they always use jackfruit for pulled pork, okay? It's, it's the most high concept improv song parody I've ever done. I thought we look, it didn't really come together, but I thought it was an admirable effort regardless. And that's on nine hours of sleep, so... Forgive me. Anyway. Uh, we, uh, excuse me, we would prefer to have this run be good, not sucky. Um... But yeah, like I, I, I've never, I never been much of a tomato guy. So I, I you know, I ate it because I was like, I, I mean, I, I practice what I preach in the food department at least. You know, when people are like, oh, so you eat things you don't think you'll like? Yeah, constantly. My mom made me a, a you know, this nice. Well, she made it for Kate as well, but this nice homemade soup and was like, you guys should try it. I don't really think it's worth it, honestly. Um, shouldn't have done it, but we had two of them, so I thought maybe it was, it was worth it. Um, so I was like, I'll give it a try, and you know what? I loved it. So th that's why I say, you know, you should every now and then you should eat things you don't think you'll like instead of just letting them rot in your fridge. But yeah, I, th this is the first tomato soup I think I've ever consumed in my entire life. I've also, dude, I've been getting so much deep lore like about myself. You know how I've always been like a little anti-spaghetti. I I may have never mentioned this, but like sometimes when I eat spaghetti. I actually get like, it's not really like nauseous, like it's not like I feel sick to my stomach, but you know that feeling, hey, I apologize if you're a little squeamish, but that, that feeling right before you throw up where like, it feels like you have like a knot in your throat and it's tough to swallow and you start to get like a little sweaty, uh, that, like I get that feeling when I eat spaghetti sometimes. Sometimes I don't, but sometimes I do. It's very weird, and I thought that I, you know, was dying, um, but then... I was talking to my mom, and she was like, oh, when I was pregnant, like, I ate so much spaghetti, it actually made me sick to my stomach. And I was like, that finally... I don't know, it might just be coincidental, but maybe there's something to that, you know? Maybe there's some epigenetic uh, sort of factor there. That, like, the reason... Like, if you made me, like, a linguine bolognese, I would be like, this is pretty delicious. If you made me a spaghetti bolognese, I'd be like, ew. Well, not ew, but I'd be like, you know, this isn't really my cup of tea. Even though it seems so bizarre to be like, you know, kind of anti one noodle and then a functionally almost identical noodle be like, this is delicious. I, I can't tell a lie. It, it's honestly, you know, the way I've uh, felt about it in the past. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but... Um, it's, there is truth in it, I should say. Uh, I think we'll just leave. We'll save our money for the next floor. I don't know if that's actually true. Like, I know, the story my mom told me, I'm assuming it's true, because it's kind of just a weird thing to lie about, but, um, I don't know if it's true that that could have an impact on, like, the lifelong, uh, palette of, of an adult human 30 years later, but... I will also say that, like, my mom said that her favorite food when she was pregnant was like, you know, deli sandwiches. And to this day, like, if you ask me like what my favorite food is, were all health concerns thrown out the window? I might, it depends on the day, I might tell you it's a salami sandwich. Might be a coincidence, but you know, I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. She also said my first word was hoagie, which is just... I mean, it's deep lore. <laughs> I refuse to be embarrassed by anything that happened in my life before I achieved the ability to remember things, though. As far as I'm concerned, they happened to somebody else. We can all laugh about it, but only I get to reap the rewards of the Twitch Prime subscriptions. Anyway, this run is uh, its a little slower than our last one, but it's, it's going. It's not indefensible. Like, I definitely think that there is a, there's a loss residing somewhere within this. Our, it, basically, our base stats are not good. HP is great, but our other base stats are, are not that impressive. Um, particularly... Well, that's actually really nice. Steam sale or money would, would hit the spot right now. Um, particularly, it would be super swell to get, uh, well, the mom transformation's worth something, but it'd be super swell to get, uh, 
some extra damage or rate of fire. They're both kind of like at the same level right now, which is maybe we'll call it average. Maybe rate of fire slightly below average, but okay, this could be a big, big swing for us. But yeah, things are things are going well. It is hard, though, like, so my mom's going to be here for, like, until the end of November. So, like, another six weeks. Because she wants to help us look after the baby. And don't get me wrong. There's a lot to be done. But there's some stuff, like, it feels... I By the way, I would not have felt like this at the age of, like, 16. But at the age of, like, you know... It, like, I've been doing my own. And by my own, I mean, like, my wife and I have been doing, you know, the household responsibilities for so long. It feels weird to, like, delegate some chores to your mom. <laughs> Even though she wants to help. And I'm not going to say we couldn't use the help, but, like, we're managing. But, you know, it would, of course, be a little bit of a load off our shoulders if we were like, Hey, mom, vacuum our whole place, right? But it just feels so weird, even though kind of everybody's a willing participant, to delegate a chore to your mom. Especially because, like, you know... Pretty much from the age of, like, 0 to 17 when I moved out to go to college. I mean, even then, like, it's not like I moved out, like, on my own dollar, right? I was like, I want some independence. And my parents were like, fine, you know, we, <laughs> we'll pay for your rent. How does that strike you? And I'm like, this is true independence right here. Being completely financially dependent on somebody else. I mean, to be fair, I was 17, but um, regardless, you know, it, it, it feels weird after after having been out of that to be like, hey, mom, do our laundry. I think I get, just got to get used to it. I mean, it's also just nice to have her come over and be like, you know, hanging out with the, her granddaughter. I'm just saying, you know, she wants to help, but it's... I don't know if this is a relatable anecdote. I think it is. It's it's like the same feeling as like, I, you know how a lot of people get like very anal about not letting anybody else. Oh, we haven't been to our item room. Not letting anybody else pay for a meal. I don't fully understand that. But I imagine it's kind of similar to like how I feel right now, which is like, you know, when you're a kid, people pay for your meals all the time. You don't pay for your own meal for the first time until you're like, you know, it, at least in the double digit ages, I think. Um, and even then, it's probably with money that you got from your parents. But anyway, like, I'm not trying to shame like 10 year olds for eating on their parents' dollar. Like, that's the way it's supposed to be. Um, but then, like, as you get older and you, you, you know, you cover all of your own meals and expenses at some point to some extent, um, you know, the idea that, like, somebody else would pay for you, it's not considered, like, a sign of disrespect, but it's like, no, no, no. I'm not going back into, like, you know, childhood dependency. You're going back into childhood dependency. I'm going to pay for your meal. How do you like that? It's kind of what it is right now. Is like, you know, come on, mom. You think I'm so big of a loser? I need my mom to do my laundry? That being said, it would be nice. Hold on. I don't think we care for more options. It's just a little too late for it to be super useful, as is uh, every single one of these as well. Do you know that in Canada there's two different food networks? I only found this out the other day. There's food network, and then there's cooking, which is the cooking channel. But it's just called cooking. So I'm I'm trying to like do some reverse engineering of how this came to pass. All I can assume is that it's like a history channel MTV sort of evolution. Where originally, you know, back in like the late 90s and the early 2000s, aka my heyday, um, the uh, the food channel was a lot of like, you know, Giada De Laurentiis and Jamie Oliver and, um, you know, people would, you know, you, every channel on the, or every show on the Food Network was like, hey, I'm a cook and we're going to cook something and then here's the recipe, you know, kind of inspired by the, the Jacques Pepin and Julia Child sort of uh, shows of the, the 80s and the early 90s on public access, right? So we've, we've come a long way from from that now every show on the food network is some kind of like glorified game show because that's what people want to see quite frankly um you know guys grocery games chopped cutthroat kitchen cake wars etc etc 
So I can only imagine that it's like a Chiang Kai's check sort of situation where like people who originally wanted the food network to be about food instead of competition then made the cooking channel and the cooking channel was like okay if you want food that's not put in a game show uh setting then what you're going to be looking for is the cooking channel but then i was watching the cooking channel and you know what it is it's just canadians diners drive-ins and dives no i mean there are people cooking things but it's way less like hey here's how you make like uh you know, a bechamel sauce at home. Um, which, by the way, I have done. I, I don't recommend it. It's, I mean, it's a multi-step process, you know. Maybe you're going to roast the chicken first, then you're going to save the bones. You're going to use the bones to make your own homemade chicken stock, and then you're going to use that chicken stock to make a, a supreme sauce. Uh, and then you're going to use the supreme sauce as, like, the, the common ancestry for a bechamel. Like, it's just... Save that for the, the, the eggheads over at, you know, the Molecular Gastronomy Academy, okay? It's not... The juice ain't worth the squeeze, in my opinion. Regardless, though, um, if you want to talk about the mother sauces, I'm here for it. They're kind of like the Infinity Stones of cooking. Regardless, um, you know, it's, it's way less like, here's stuff you can cook at home, and way more like, hey, if you ever find yourself in Indianapolis... Check out this bar. You won't believe it. They got a burger that's got kimchi on it. What? That's crazy. I guess there's just no... It, it surprises... Well, you know what? I was going to say I guess there's no market for like those old school kind of cooking shows. But I'm totally wrong. There is a market for them on YouTube. That's cool. I support that. It seems like it makes a lot of sense. Because like, uh, like I'm just going to level with you. You can make a lot of money on YouTube. But like, you know... The average YouTube video is not going to bring in as much revenue as, like, you know, an episode of Chopped, right? So the fact is, you know, you're producing this stuff on a much lower budget. Because you don't need to get uh, Jet Tila in order to judge for you. And, uh, you know, you, you probably make a little bit less. But it, it's a sustainable market for a smaller operation as well. And people love to, to watch that kind of stuff. Now, I say a smaller market as if, like, you know, Bon Appetit and, uh, you know, Binging with Babish aren't, like destroying me in terms of analytics i just mean relative to like those shows where they're like you know make a cake that looks like baby yoda mm, i'm sorry to tell you susan this cake does not look as much like baby yoda as i would have expected i'm gonna give you a four out of ten game shows really have kind of take or com competition shows have really taken over like every network right it's crazy. History Channel. Like, it... I mean, it, everybody knows the History Channel. You know, it went from, like... You know, here's some stuff about history to, like... You know, Adolf Hitler's still alive, maybe! To, like, uh, aliens uh, built the pyramids. And then it was Pawn Stars. Now it's, like, exclusively, like... We got, like, seven people building swords. And the, the sharpest sword that can cut through a lamb carcass most cleanly wins. Don't need anything else here, really. Um, oh, the Tinted Rock, dude! The Tinted Rock! Anyway, we don't have any bombs. Um, and then, like, you know, the Food Network is all cooking competitions. It's all, it's all competitions, man. You know what people used to say? You know, it isn't a competition. They don't say that anymore. Even, like, the Comedy Network, you know? It's no longer, like... You know, hey, person you've never heard of that's been doing this for 40 years uh, tells a couple of jokes. It's it's now, you know, last comic standing. Last one laughing. Human brain's got some real problems. That's honestly, that's why I like, um, like, Rob and I did a watch party of, like, some cooking shows that were on uh, Amazon Prime. I love the aesthetic of, like, those 90s cooking shows where it's just, like, a voiceover and then, like, one chef who works at a hotel in Boston. And is like, uh, hey, yeah, this is how we make the chowder. And then I don't know what accent that was, by the way, but it's it's his, not mine. So don't take it up with me. You know, you you learn a little something, and then you go, ooh, what's he gonna do with that that lard? <laughs> and then you're like, oh my god, he's rendering it. I don't believe it. So I'm I'm taking the pills now because I got a little desperate. Can I tell you something? I I. 
A, I think we're completely going to make it out of this run. Because I've recognized my faults before it's become too late, I think. Um, but also, secondarily... Come on, man. Uh, I think we're going to be fine. I think we're going to get a bunch of red hearts. It's all going to get together. Come on. Come on, dude. There we go. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. I can't believe it. We're going to do it. <laughs> Wasn't there a tinted rock down there? We could use it right now. I mean, our stats are good. I, honestly, I just had one bad room and I got a little lazy. That is not a tinted rock. Um, maybe we could blow this up. Get into the secret room. I thought maybe we'd blow up the rock as well. I'm I'm simultaneously like pogged and also scared to take pills right now. We only got two and a half HP. So th that's why we're not taking, you know, any risks. Any unnecessary risks, anyway. Like here, we only got two bombs, but I think using one to get out of this cursed room. Oh, this is a weird one. Um, but but also a good one, because like, hold up. Weirdly enough, I'm like, our orbital, I think, was the best play there. That's not what we were looking for, I think it's fair to say. That is kind of what we were looking for. <laughs> that sort of thing is my bag, baby. I think we will do our, our full run reroll. I hate that it's kind of, like, essential, but I think it's important nonetheless. So our stats got way better. We did lose blue candle, but we do have 10 damage. I would treat that as a positive. You know what? We can go back and get a book, too. I will resist the notion that we were saved by that one room. Um, but I can't deny that there's, there's definitely, like... It's a shortcut to safety. But safety doesn't have days off, you know? So you gotta... You take those precautions where you find them. So we got the Bible... We got that. <laughs> Not your favorite books. So I, I'm just gonna go ahead and say that, like, you know, we, we already took it, but Book of Secrets, I don't know if it's the best for us, but it's, um... I think the Bible is scary just because I never remember, like, doesn't it kill you automatically on, like, one boss fight? I don't think that risk, even though it's mitigatable, um, I don't think that risk is worth um, just being able to occasionally fly. Doesn't doesn't strike me as being a good trade-off. What it, we have an eleven percent chance of a deal with the devil, <laughs> which actually has a seventy-one point eight eight repeating, of course, chance of being a deal with the angel. All right. Well, we don't have to worry about that. Oh, I didn't even realize we have dark bum too. Anyway, what was I talking about? I don't know. Everything's good right now. I'm hoping that uh, that this week we, we can introduce a little bit more variety to the YouTube channel again. Um, you know, it's it's still early. For sure. Like, um, I think, like, the way I would I would typify or, or describe, like, the, the way I expect work to go in this postnatal environment is uh, I got back to work earlier than expected. No doubt about that. I think... We, we should have picked those up. I think it's going to take a little longer than expected to get back to 100% capacity. But that's a trade-off I can live with. Like, being able to find the time to do a little work um, is, is not hard. Honestly. Like... It, Admittedly, sometimes, some days is easier than others, but but being able to do, like, you know, a few videos a day or a, a, a three-hour stream per day, it's not rocket science, you know? But being able to get back to the point where we're going to be... I mean, we're, we're probably not going to hit 100% capacity maybe for, like, a long time. And I'm not talking weeks, I'm talking, like, years. But j that's mostly because my 100% capacity was, like... <laughs> was higher than it should have been even for a childless adult to begin with. But um, uh, we, we'll go back for that. We'll go back for that. 
Dude, I hate this room. Close the map. There we go. Shouldn't have stood there. I think we got a little lucky. Oh, I left one. I left one. Okay, that's good stuff. So yeah, maybe 100% capacity is not the the way we should be expressing it. We should be saying is like, you know, right now we got three videos coming out a day. It's very easy to record one Isaac, one Spelunky, two, one Fall Guys. Fall Guys is always like a half hour or less. Isaac, you know, it varies, but, you know, I can play this game in my sleep at this point, And sometimes, you know, you'd be surprised to find that I was awake when I was actually playing it. Um... And then, uh, Spelunky varies. Some of the episodes are 25 minutes, some of the episodes are an hour, but, you know. The episodes that are an hour are, quite frankly, more fun to record, because you're usually making progress on those. So it's, it's kind of easy. I would say, rather than thinking about it in terms of, like, oh, when is, like, you know, this, 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 and this gonna be back? One flex position, hopefully, will start to return on an irregular basis relatively soon, like, within the next week or so and it won't be like a fourth video every day but it'll be like a fourth video occasionally and it's you know it's just a learning process we're gonna get there eventually but i am at the point now where i'm like a couple of weeks ago i was like just happy to get these three videos out a day now i'm like i think i could i don't want to squeeze too much but i think i could squeeze uh, squeeze slightly more because like you know there's stuff coming out that i want to check out like, what's that crown trick that just came out? A disc room? I want to give those a shot, so... We'll, we'll... You know, no promises, because, you know, every day is a little bit different, but... We're working to... Working together to find the time. While also, you know, spending time with the family, making sure, you know, mother and baby are okay. But I appreciate, uh, you know, being given the space in the first place. Excuse me, um, that's unfair damage. I'd like to speak to your manager. We have ten bombs. This is good. Let me out, please. Let me... Oh, <laughs> that was close. As was that, actually. But I don't know why I'm so concerned. Like, we do... It's seven HP is not a ton, but it's enough to... Especially with Dark Bum, it's enough to be like, we're pretty safe. Maybe even like very safe. This room again is very bombable. Like a snowman. I just, I'm, I'm not really a huge fan of Destiny Spear or Spear of Destiny. More of a fan of the Pick of Destiny. I'll actually just be honest with you. I've never seen um, Tenacious D's The Pick of Destiny. I should. I I mean, I, I've said it before. I can see why some people would find them annoying. But I actually find Jack Black... Like, if we were doing a list of, of Hollywood actors and actresses by likability, I really feel like Jack Black might be, like, the top of the list for me. I think he might be the most likable. Is he in the best movies? No. Like, he's been in a lot of garbage. Let's be honest. And that's fine, you know? He's not responsible. In every movie that he's been in where I've been like, this movie kind of sucks, the only reason I was watching it in the first place was for Jack Black. It wasn't like I ever watched a movie and I was like, oh no, Jack Black's in this? I'm out, you know? So just that is likable in and of itself. I know a lot of people, when I bring this up, a lot of people talk about Ryan Reynolds. I've gotten, everything I've ever heard about Ryan Reynolds is that he's a very nice guy. He's Vancouver local for sure. Um, but I don't know, man. I just find him kind of smarmy. <laughs> I, I don't know. I find, maybe it's because, you know, uh, Ryan Reynolds is kind of the conventional Hollywood hunk. I'm like, ah, oh, you think you're... All that in a bag of potato chips. Jack Black, I'm like, that's a guy I could sit down and have a beer with. Okay. We're probably not going to fight Mega Satan, at least not right away. I'm proud of how we turned this run around by completely lucking into a uh, one room and then having it be good. 
<laughs> and then getting an amazing deal with the devil that we had no control over. I think we, we really put our stamp of, uh, of approval on this run. We really did what we had to do, which was literally survive for the bare minimum amount of time until the run decided to give us a victory. So thank you for that. You know what? With, with 14 damage, I'm willing to give this a try now. We got 98 plays on this son of a gun right here. I don't think that we're gonna... Like, here's how I want to use this right now, okay? He summons these guys. That's where we start mashing the button. But it's... We're, we're gonna go through the... Our limited supply of HP quite quickly. It's not... Or not HP, but money. It's not like it's gonna last forever. Like, we already used 28 cents just killing the, the Horsemen of the Apocalypse, so... That being said, that does... Ease up on the... The difficulty of the fight quite immensely. Like, that's usually where we take the most damage. I'll go ahead and say it. This is, like, some of the most effectively, as of this point, that we've ever managed to use Magic Fingers, so... <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good about it. And then again, single targets. I don't know where you're shooting, but let's just stay here. Okay. Again, single targets. You don't even have to, like, sweat it, you know? You, you got enough damage here, like, especially with Fruitcake giving you, like, Explosivo and Holy Light. Like, you can just hang out. Getting the occasional penny drop that allows us to do some good crowd control. Like, this is it's a good situation. So we'll just get through this phase. Should happen like any second now. And then we got 53 cents to just mash. That was kind of a, a cool way to actually realize some gains there. So a, a bit bit weird, not necessarily the way that we drew it up, but still fairly decent. By the way, do not adjust your glasses prescription. This is just how the game looks right now. That almost got the job done. All right, uh, interesting finish to this one. And you know what? We got two two runs in a row with a victory. Oops, I forgot to go to Void, dude. For now, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. I'm a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya!